Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. Well first of all guys, I want to apologise for not putting a video out yesterday. It is now Tuesday midday. Um, unfortunately, I had another stomach bug. It's the second stomach bug of the year for me. And this one was a fairly nasty one. Um, but I suppose that is the one of the disadvantages of having three young children that go to two different schools. We're forever circling a bunch of germs. Um, but I'm over the worst of it, guys. And yesterday, bless his cotton socks, Isaac did a bit of footage on the Land Rover that he has been doing, the Series 1 Land Rover engine, um, and a bit on what has been going on. Uh, Paul and I did a little bit of footage on the Friday when I started to feel a bit rough. I've actually been in bed ever since Friday evening, so um, yeah, not great. But on the plus side, there's nothing like a nice stomach bug to um, get rid of a few of the few of the f in your 40s pounds. But um, yeah, so I'm just heading on down to work now. I've Gonna, I'm going to see how I get on, but I want to spend a couple of hours there um, just finishing the Cosworth 200 block with the, that I'm putting the liners in. Um, little did I know that 200 block is from a guy called Steve Scott from A1 Rally Sport. Now, Steve has been, or A1 Rally Sport, has been a sort of name in the Cosworth world for years and years, way before I started doing the Cosworth. So I suppose for me, it's got RS flowing through the veins then i suppose it's a bit of an honor really that he's bought it to me so um yeah i'm just going to head on down there i did say to him i would get it done for monday obviously it was nearly there and it would have been finished monday morning but um unfortunately i haven't been able to do it so i emailed him this morning saying Look, i'm going to do my best to get down there this afternoon still feeling a bit weak but um i've had a little bit of food and um i'm going to get down there and see if we can get that finished for him Let's go and have a little chat with Paul. Oh, hi, mate. I didn't know you were coming along. Hello, Paul. How are you? We haven't seen you on the channel, mate, for a week or two. I've been hiding, mate, yeah. Been hiding, been yeah. Been hiding, yeah. So what's going on here? What are we doing? This is the uh, M54 BMW. Ah. Which is um, starting to take shape now. It's looking very nice. It's and looking... what do you think about the um, the cleanliness from the Vapor Blaster, mate? Nicer to work with? It's, it's come up lovely. Um, the finish is great. You've got to spend a lot of time cleaning it. Yeah. But if you clean it properly, they've... The benefits are there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a lot nicer to um, assemble, but I sort of come to the conclusion there's probably not any less time in cleaning than before. No. It just You just get a nicer product at the you end. You just get a nicer finish. But if you're paying good money, you want a nice finish, don't you? Exactly, you do. Plus, yeah. it probably does look better than a paint finish. You know, I think it does, anyway. So you've got um, the cams in now, mate? Just bolting this uh, inlet camshaft in. Um, just waiting for a... Uh, Wait for a timing kit yeah, timing that we kit. didn't have for this M54, um, believe it or not. Quite a trick little timing kit, basically. You've got to have a plate that bolts the Vanos units together. Okay. And you've got a bar that locks the camshafts together. Yeah. Right, so as Lee's probably already told you, he's off field today, so he's not here. So I'm going to show you what I've been getting up to. Um, Paul's doing his own thing as well today, so he's not here either. So in the last couple of days, I've managed to get the bottom end for this Land Rover together. Uh, got all the split pins in on the rod, um, rod bolts, rod nuts. Um, it's all torqued up. All turns pretty nicely on the rock there. And now I'm just checking that we've got all the head bolts for the head because this engine come in already stripped. So, I think there's 12 head bolts on this one. So yeah, oh, 14. So there's 14 actual bolts, and then there's two that just have little crosses there that are actually just the rocker post nuts that hold the rocker posts down. Um, so yeah, we, we've, got, we've got 10 of them, it looks like. Got all the long ones, all these medium sized ones, wow. 
So I'm going to have to find those front four. Hopefully, they might be. They might be in this box of bits we've still got. So I'll have a dig through there. Found those other bolts. Uh, going to give them a clean up. And then other than that, not too much more I can do on this Land Rover for now. Got all the water pump pulley all painted up nicely there. Got a couple of new bits here. Uh, a little ha cover for the end of the head. The old one's quite badly corroded. Just goes... Goes on there like that. The old one's here. So you can see why we've had to replace that. The actual, this little part here is just corroded and, and broken basically. Um, what else? We got all the bits in here. These are all the bits that are ready to go again. All being sort of, you know, painted, blasted. Um, got a couple of covers and other than that with the block is literally just the bottom end is built waiting for a camshaft at the minute needed a new one of those I'll show you the old one so as you can see this old cam the one that was in there is just completely it's just not usable really so badly it's almost just rusted away um, so yeah we've got a new one come in that's taken a little while to get here, but once we've got that, we'll be able to start getting some of the timing gear on, getting a little bit further with it. You can see I've given the flywheel a face as well. Um, balance that to the crank. Got the clutch cover there. A couple of balance holes in it as well. And obviously we've got the, the BMW V8, which I think is, that must be nearly done now. Yeah, it's sump pans on, that must be very nearly, or if not completely done. There's a, there's a few bits there. I think Lee's already mentioned that. Then we've got the M54 BMW, which is looking sort of nearly there. It's just still got the DTI in it, so yeah, still being timed up. I expect Paul will get back on that one when he's back. Just come in the office to put the microphone away. And it looks like we've got a timing kit or, or something just turned up um, I think I think that's the timing kit for the M54 which would make sense as to why it's not timed up yet so that all looks quite nice very nice so I'm sure that's um, gonna make Paul's life a little bit easier when he's back. Well, unfortunately, I've got in a little too late this morning and um, Paul's already used the timing kit on the BMW. He's far too efficient, this man. I don't know, it took me quite a few hours to figure it out, mate. Oh, did it? <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't too bad. It's just the whole setup and sprocket setup on that side can be a little bit complicated, so. Right. But we but got around it. But it's coming on all right. You've got the rocker cover on. Yeah, rocker cover's so on, it's mate. All, it's, it's all timed up. You know how to set these Vanosses up from now on then, Paul. Yeah. Basically an ex expert now, mate. Expert, yeah. Yeah. Well, just followed the instructions in it, and I took a load of photos when we stripped it down. So, I think after, yeah, after time really with this, because um, obviously we use auto data. I think most of the time, even garages that have done jobs like this over and over again, the mistake they make is not reading the instructions. Yeah, the, the key to that is following instructions. Probably it is. Yeah, it is very, it is very good, but a lot of people tend to skip bits that you know could be quite important because there are quite a lot of steps you need to follow and your thing has to line up and it won't work basically yeah um but even if it's an engine that you know we've done several times i still revert back to that and just double check and make sure you've read everything and not missing anything because that's when bugger ups happen yeah so what we got to do now then mate on this just uh yeah, bolt rock rocker cover down um i've got to lift it off the stand a little bit to get this back plate on right because we haven't got enough room on this these arms. Ah, that's and I don't annoying. want to leave two arms because it will just snap. Annoying. So, so you've got to basically take that off to get that cover on before we can get the sump on. Yeah, so I'll put the uh, rear cover on. Obviously the sump sits down on that face there, so you have to have that on. And then there'll be bolt the sump on. on. Well, apart from that, you're nearly there, aren't you? Yeah, it'll be done if you ask me. It'll be all finished and uh, that one can go. We need to tighten this bottom pulley up, which is 
like 400 newton meters or something. So yeah, if we get John Lane on it and we get the scaffold on the whole thing. Well done, Paul. Looking very nice. Sorted. So after this, we haven't got much to do. I think the bits have arrived here for the V8. Yep. A few little gaskets. So we've got this gasket here that sits in this cover there. Um, we need an O-ring for the thermostat housing, which I think could be that one. A few other little bits. Obviously the um, dipstick tube has got to go in, but that, apart from that, that's it. We can get both of these on their way, Paul. Yeah. And get that rather grotty looking Mercedes underneath the car. Yeah, and Mercedes. Stripped. And then that V8 over there. So let's see what he's doing up here. Hello. Hello, buddy, all right? All right. What are you doing up there? I'm just sort of, well, I'm going to get this seat out. Uh, all the seat rails and stuff's coming out. Right. Got the old harness off as well. Okay. Can we come around there so I can see you? Yeah. So I think Isaac's just taken a few more bits off before Mikey has it. Obviously, both doors are off now. Uh, seat yeah, rails. Yeah, just a few little bits there to take off, obviously, because we're painting the inside. Going to leave the fuel rails in there or the fuel lines, lines for a yeah. minute just so Paul, uh, Mikey can have a little look at the setup and where we're going to go with the, with the lines because um, obviously we want to get everything sort of drilled and mounted before we paint it, don't we? Yeah, ideally. Um, but everything else can sort of come out. Yeah. So hopefully, I have messaged him today and he should be having it pretty soon. Um, one last piece of the puzzle apart from the body kit, which is another story. The front panels arrived today, so we've got the new front panel. And when we just sort of tried it up here, you can visibly see just by looking at the new one how bent this thing is. So this bit here is bent to buggery and that even more so so yeah it's a bit all over the shop um just fingers crossed at this point i'm sure it is but hopefully the chassis legs are all nice and straight uh, and then we can just position that front panel on where we need it but to be honest with you it's well worth getting one um at this stage obviously it's all going to be nicely painted oh no. and um yeah looking at this now just goes to show how battered the old one is um, even all at the top here is just awful. So with the new lights and everything else, may as well go that way. So um, what we owe knowing about, mate? I could, <laughs> you know, I could hear you owe knowing with the mic on. Uh, well, one of the bolts for this seat rail, I think the captive nut underneath the car. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. It's not an oh, no. It's all good. <laughs> oh, no. It's an I oh, thought yes. The captive, yeah, an oh, yes. <laughs> I thought the captive nut had come away but obviously not so no. that's all right then oh that's good news so meanwhile guys why um paul's doing the bmw and isaac is again doing the bmw i suppose um i'm just finishing the last bore now on this cosworth for a1 rally sport um two cuts per ball there's about sort of 50 thou left in these line as to what's got to come out and um, he's got some lovely cosworth pistons to go in lovely item they are um, so basically I bored these now with two thou to be honed out so next step is to just face the block very very lightly to obviously just take the, the tops off these liners and get a nice finish on the top of the block get it nice and flat and then it's going to go straight on the hone over there and I'll hone that out to the exact finish size and then um, give Steve a ring I'm sure he'll be pleased to hear that I've come in made the extra effort although I'm able to come in and get this finish for him but I don't want him to feel sorry for me. Right, so out there when I was talking about the front panel, guys, you probably heard me say that the body kit is another story. Well, it is, um, but it's a slightly worrying story at the moment. Uh, so the way it goes is we ordered, I think the very beginning of March, 3rd of March, we ordered a body kit from a company in Poland. Um, they very quickly got back to us, give us a price, um, you know, it's not cheap, this kit. It's a very good quality kit. We've had stuff from Poland in the past. I've got a feeling we've had stuff from this company in the past. Not really a problem. They're a little bit over schedule on the time, um, but it was a carbon bit that we had and it was very, very good quality. So no problems with that, if it is the same company. Um, but they have quoted us like, you know, we're talking thousands here. And um, so we've gone ahead, paid it, no troubles whatsoever. The turnaround was meant to be about five weeks. Um, so obviously this being the beginning of March, 
short of their word, it was about five weeks. I think it was actually six, more like. But um, two weeks ago, he said he was going to send it. They usually do their European deliveries on a weekend, which is odd. Um, so we sort of, I made sure that I was going to be around all weekend. Sure enough, I Sunday afternoon came, still no delivery. I tried to email the guy, couldn't get hold of him. Um, so he I did email him Monday, obviously still no arrival of the body kit. Um, he got back to me eventually after a couple of emails saying, just heard back, the, guy, the delivery guy that we use has broke down in France um, until they get another lorry sorted, we don't, we don't know. But he said it's, it's sort of out of his hands. And I thought, well, it's not. You've, I paid for a body kit and you're meant to be sending me one. And that's how it was left. That was a week ago on the Monday, um, since then, I've sent probably a dozen emails asking where our body kit is. I've even tried ringing the number to the company, which is obviously in Poland. No answer, and he's not answering me. So as you can imagine, guys, at this stage, I'm slightly concerned. One, because it's a lot of money. And two, it's in Poland. What are we going to do? How do we get our money back? So, um, yeah. I'm just going to probably wait until the end of this week, guys. Um, bit nervous at the moment. As I say, we've got all the panels for the car now, the metal work, and the body kit we do need or are going to need in the next few weeks. Um, but I'm more concerned about, you know, where this kit is. It could just turn up, so I don't want to go um, sort of floating names about at the moment. But I'm going to give them to the end of this week to respond to me. If no response, I'm going to be telling you who they are. Um, and maybe you could help me guys, but um, yeah, fingers crossed that turns up either this week or this weekend, or I at least get an email back, but I'll, uh, I'll let you know on that. Really sorry about yesterday guys, not putting a video out, um, still not feeling great at the moment. I have stuck today out from the stuff from when I got in, um, but yeah, until another video, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the notification bell, and we will see you tomorrow with a bit of luck. Cheers, guys.